This video is dedicated to James Humphreys. James. Thank you. An Impercal versus Zaxara. Uh, we have access to three mana. Do we need to get rid of Lauren? We've got Skull Clamp to refill our hands, so I'll try this. Go for a mountain into the Mox. And do we just get rid of Bassery Ket? Just in case we need to get rid of Fast Mana. Eh, I'll be greedy and get rid of the Lauren. And then we'll play out the Swift Foot Boots, ready for our commander coming down in a turn or two. Just a Fable Passage for our opponent. Uh, there is a Damning Verdict, so... Yeah. I'll just hope that my opponent can't get rid of the Animpacal, because we can't afford to put the Swift Foot Boots onto it. Alright, hasn't gone after our commander just yet. Let's attempt to put Swift Foot Boots on there. Alright, and that lands, so now I feel alright going for the Loyal Apprentice. Loyal Apprentice will make a Thopter at the beginning of every turn. And then I think we're safe swinging in with our commander, because it will get a plus counter on it. And of course comes in and swings a Golem token in at our opponent as well, so... We've got some Sack Fodder for the Skull Clamp now, just need to try and dodge a Toxic Deluge at this point. Alright, our opponent doesn't have it, does have a uh, Phyrexian Metamorph, so copying the Chrome Mox. And throwing underneath that a Cryptic Command, so... Does have counter magic in the deck apparently. Alright, not getting into another white mana. Uh, we could go professional facebreaker. This triggers on any creatures hitting. So I think we're fine to get that down here and then we can clamp. And this might bait some counter magic from our opponent as well. You know, swing in with everything now. Sometimes play around a snap mage or something like that. Sometimes players will throw them in just to block something like a loyal apprentice. Which is going to generate a lot of value this game. So we create a treasure token with the professional face breaker, get another couple of golems, and uh, let's play the skull clamp without equipping it against my better judgement. We're not getting into lands here, so need to maximise our mana every turn. Although, probably would have kept the treasure, so could have played and equipped it next turn. And yep. Alright, we'll try again against Brimaz this time, and... That's pretty slow, so we'll try and get into some acceleration. Um, okay, with the Ancient Tomb, that's okay. Doesn't help us get our commander out any quicker, though. So we'll just get rid of the Rugged Prairie. And we are on the draw. All right, and there's a Mana Crypt, which definitely accelerates us. So that means it's the Plateau into the Mana Crypt. We won't be able to get down our commander unless we get into another Coloured Source next turn. But I do want to be looking at my opponent's hand with the invasion of Golbakan. Alright, so with that we get to take Arcane Signet, Knight of the White Orchid, Luminous Brood Moth, or a Mox Opal. Uh, we might be able to keep the Moth Metalcraft, so let's go after Knight of the White Orchid. There's fewer creatures for them to swing in with at least. Brimaz is going to be an aggro deck, so playing the Arcane Signet and throwing out the Mox Opal as well. Alright, so a land would be good here. No, instead it is Citadel Seed, so get down the Sunbound Pass in tapped, and we'll just have to pass at that, unfortunately. Playing out the bed, and then being able to swing in with it next turn with the Animpakal in play would be good. Alright, Coercive Portal in 1v1. Don't often see it anymore, I used to play it a lot, but Coercive Portal is just draw a card every turn, pretty much. Alright, Loyal Apprentice is nice, so... Do we just go for our commander here? Or we could go for Perforos as well, maybe... Yeah, we can't go for Citadel Siege. Play the Ancient Tomb. So yeah, we'll play ourselves a Perforos. And this way we're going to have more Thopters to swing in with into our commander next turn. And obviously puts a Perforos in play as well, ready to shock our opponent. Alright, playing a Mana Tithe, don't often see that one. Only one card in hand at least. And our opponent can force the draw with the Coercive Portal, so... Doesn't matter what we vote for. And a Luminous Brood Moth comes into play, going to keep our opponent's board intact. Two cards in hand that we don't know about. Alright, there's a Swift Foot Boot, so maybe time to get down our commander here. Not whether our opponent does have Metal Craft with the Mox Opal now. A Shock from Perforos. And we can play and equip the boots as well. Coercive Portal continuing to refill our opponent's hand. Buried Ruin can grab back an artifact from the bin. So down comes Brimaz into play without haste, thankfully. And there is an Oblivion Ring likely going after the Swiftfoot Boots, I would think. Maybe Perforos. Yeah, goes after the Boots. So the Broodmoth swings in towards us. Losing the flip to Mana Crypt against an aggro deck isn't good. 
get into a land again it is not coloured mana unfortunately we'll have to play this citadel siege and we'll name Khans with that which allows us to go through to combat and two plus counters go on the only creature that we have in play so now we can go through to attacks and I'll go after the invasion of Gobakan because we can take it out here and it'll be protection against board wipes for us as well our opponent may well block here just to get a flying counter on his Brimaz. So the 1-1's one enter will take these in at the battle as well. So that we can guarantee getting that. And Perforos triggers three times thanks to the three gnomes entering. And yep, yeah, he's going after the Brimaz. So blocks and gets a blocking cat as well. So I'll actually go after the token so that we don't have enough uh, power left to take out Brimaz here. And tokens obviously don't come back from the graveyard with a flying counter or in any means whatsoever still triggers the Illuminous Broodmoth triggers our battle as well now that it's had its counters removed now I don't think the gnomes are going to get plus counters at the end of the turn because they entered attacking, they didn't attack it's a bit of weird wordage but this says a plus counter on each creature that attacked this turn as opposed to entered attacking it doesn't tend to work in my experience so let's go for... we need to fix our own colours so let's keep the Brimaz from being unblockable. We'll go after this Rogue's Passage. Our opponent's already got his colours fixed quite nicely. It means taking more damage from the Ancient Tomb, but we're not doing too good a job of getting into our colours, unfortunately. And I don't think my opponent has a Swords or anything. Yeah, so just a plus counter on the Animpakal is now a 5-6. But our opponent's got the card draw advantage, unfortunately. Now it could be that they get to a point where they feel as though they want to wipe the board and they might encourage us to try and wipe the board with this so we just always vote for homage okay to case is welcome for even more card advantage there's an intrepid hero without haste thankfully so losing that swift foot boots isn't good we'd want to remove the o-ring preferably but they go full aggro on us dealing seven damage yeah vigilance doing some work for our opponent here and of course we lose the flip as well we're not destined to do anything this game i don't think Finally getting into some more coloured manner in the Rugged Prairie. Now we could go for the activations on Perforos. It's only plus one though, unfortunately. Um, so we're just going to have to hold back Gnome Tokens to chump block with. Plus counters go on our commander again. Which means we're going to get seven Gnome Tokens, which is 14 damage. So they'll have 18 left, but they can just chump block even if we go for Perforos, God of the Forge. Can we survive a turn is the question. They'll definitely get, try and get rid of the Animpakal. Yeah, I think we just have to swing in with the commander and hold back the gnomes. If we're going to win this one, it's thanks to Perforos. So all those gnomes coming into play. And we'll see how they block. We might want to activate Perforos a couple of times. So down to 18 before blocks are declared. Chump blocking the commander, getting rid of a gnome. Not wanting to lose the intrepid hero by the looks of it. So we could deal 12 damage here, okay, 10 damage. Uh, actually, we could buff these by 3, so that'd be 15. Could buff them even more than that, actually. We'll see what happens with the Brimaz token. That'll block another one as well, won't it? Oh no, it just um, blocks alongside the Brimaz, so we'll get rid of a token there. It does trigger the Tkasia's Welcome to draw a card, uh, but I think we do it here because... That will be 15 damage and then we can get them with the Baird and Perforos. So yeah, I think that's the play here. Rugged Prairie making more white mana for us was actually the play and so was the Demolition Field last turn because we wouldn't have been able to make as much red mana here. Activate the Perforos again. So now these are three ones and about to hit our opponent. Luminous Broodmoth will bring things back into play with a flying counter. And then we'll go for the card we've been holding on to since the beginning. Baird, Argivian Recruiter. And that will enter, shocking our opponent, and then it will make a token at the beginning of the end step. Light Shield Array puts plus counters on things. And there we go, Perforos sneaking out a win for us. Looks like a very capable Brimaz deck that our opponent's built. But fortunately we were able to out-aggro him here. We're surprised at the um, lack of popularity with an Impacal, so hopefully you all enjoyed this one. If this video doesn't do as well as the previous an Impacal video, which didn't do well either, then... I won't be running it again, but if you do want to see it again, then you'll have to let me know in the comments section. Big thank you to the patrons as ever. I'm Tribal Kai. Thank you for watching.